Good morning students. We are discussing on railway and airport engineering. In the previous lecture, we have started discussion for the rails. In that lecture, we have discussed about different types of rails, what are the requirements for the ideal rails and one of the standard rail section. Okay. Now in today's lecture, we will discuss about defects that over in the rails okay so starting the lecture the defects in rails well uh, there are five different types of uh, defects has been observed on the rails and those are the first that is the hogging of rails well here you can see uh, this defect of rail okay that is known as the hogging of rails well here rail and get hogged due to poor maintenance of the rail joints yielding formation loose and faulty fastenings and some other such reasons well probably rail ends because at that particular point we connect at one end of rail to the second starting point of the rails okay and then joint uh, may sometimes get loosened because of the frequent loading okay so at such places these are some critical places okay and at there those places such hogging moment or the hogging defect is been observed so the cause is quality of the track that may get deteriorated and such kind of defects can be uh, you know solved by uh, providing the shovel packings to that particular places well the second defect that is the scabbing of rails well the scabbing of rails occur due to the falling of patches or the chunks of metal from the rail table this is a upper table as you remember the previous lecture this upper part or the upper portion of the rail is called as the upper table yes so this uh, patches or uh, falling of such kind of patches and chunks on the upper table that is uh, called as the scabbing of rails okay the scabbing is generally seen in the shape of an elliptical depression where the surface reveals a progressive uh, fracture with numerous cracks on the surface. The next defect that is the wheel burns. Well, wheel burns are caused by the sleeping of the driving wheel of locomotives on particular rail surface. Well, as a consequence, the extra heat is generated and the surface of the rail gets affected and as a result a depression on the table is being observed and such kind of depression is considered as the wheel burn effect so these are generally uh, observed or we can say noticed on steep gradient or where um, there are heavy incidences of tracking columns so this was about the defect that is called as the wheel burns the next effect that is the shelling and black spots well this shelling is a progressive horizontal separation of metal that occurs on the gauge side well generally uh, it is seen on the uh, upper table or you can say the upper gauge corner as here uh, you can see in the figure that upper table or the upper gauge corner is get uh, affected with uh, such defect. It is primarily caused by the heavy bearing pressure on the small particular area okay, which uh, produces heavy internal shear stresses. So uh, we can uh, in other way we can say that if the load is coming on a particular uh, contact area 
okay uh, then that particular area may get uh, affected by that pressure or the shear stresses and uh, as a result sometimes it get uh, dismantled or you know it gets separated uh, from its original size and shape okay so such kind of separation or the defect has been seen on the upper side of upper side corner of the gauge or the rail okay and such kind such defect is known as the shelling and black spot the fifth defect that is the corrugation of rails the corrugation of rail is a quite an uh, undesirable feature well when the vehicle pass over the corrugated rails a rotating sound is produced and possibly due to the you know locking of air in the corrugation such kind of noise may produce okay and uh, such a process of having that noise or producing that noise that is known as the roaring of rails well uh, such unpleasant and uh, excessive noise may cause uh, inconvenience to the passengers so corrugation also results in a rapid acceleration of rails and this may cause the loosen uh, the fitting such as a keys okay uh, and that cause excessive wear to the fittings also and uh, sometimes it disturbs the packing that provided to the rails to increase its stability corrugation can be removed by grinding the rail head by a fraction of a millimeter well the problem of corrugation has been tackled in a great uh, detail on german railways where two types of equipments are normally used for the rail grinding so such kind of grinding make the upper surface of the rails very smooth so that such kind of uh, noise where may not produced okay so these are five defects of rails hogging of rails cabbing of rail wheel burns shelling and black spot and the corrugation of rails okay now the next topic that we will discuss that is the creep of rails well first of all what is creep of rail the creep is defined as the longitudinal movement of the rails with respect to the sleepers on a particular track well creep is uh, common to all the railway tracks but it varies in magnitude considerably the rails in some places moves by several centimeters in a month while in other locations the movement of the rail may be negligible while it is observed that the rails have a tendency to move gradually in the direction of dominant traffic so the creep is kind of a longitudinal movement on the sleepers longitudinal movements of the track with respect to the sleepers well indication of the creep that is closing of successive expansion spaces at the rail joints in the direction of the creep and opening of joints at the point where the creep starts marks on the flanges and waves of rails made by the spike head or by the scraping or the scratching as a rail sides so these two are the indications of creep now let's discuss some of the theoretical parts or the theory of the creep or we can say what are the different causes for which the creep occurs well there are various theories uh, propounded to explain this cause or to explain this defect uh, there are different causes of creep but none of them gives the true picture for the real cause of the creep in the rails well the first theory that is known as the wave action theory or the wave theory well in this theory a wave action or the wave motion is been set up by moving loads of wheel here in this figure you can see uh, this a b a b and c okay these are the vertical reverse curve here in this figure you can see this is a a b c a uh, vertical reverse curve is formed in the rails ahead of the wings 
which resulting from the rail deflection under the loads which mainly cause the wheels push the wave with a tendency to force the rail in the direction of the motion of the train. On the particular rail section, the joint action by several wheels causes the creep. As the wheels move, the lift in the front of the wheel is thus carried forward by the wheels and thus the causes creep whereas the lift at the rear of the wheel gets back to its normal position as shown in this figure you can see this is the lift the upper lift for the top rail well the movement of the train is in this direction and this is the unloaded position of the rail which is at the normal level second that is the starting and slowing down the train which is called as the drag theory well in this theory the forces acting at the time of starting also at the time of uh, applying the acceleration or slowing down or the stopping the train this process is sometimes causes the creep well during the starting operation the wheels pushes the rails in the backward direction such as shown in this figure while uh, during the stopping of the train at that moment the wheels pushes the rail in the forward direction and such as it causes the creep into the forward direction while the third theory that is the percussion theory according to this theory the creep is due to the impact of the wheel loads at the rail section at the end or the ahead of the joints well here in this figure you can see at the joints okay this particular rail section may apply the impact load at the starting of this rail section and at the end of this rail section here uh, at the middle of this joints okay a resultant force r is being applied okay and that resultant force r has two different components the first one that is the p which is called as the horizontal component which tends to the creep while the second that is the vertical component that is known as q okay that component will tend to bend the rail in the vertical direction because it gives impact of vertical load and hence as and when the wheels leave the trail rails and strike the facing rail and at each joint it pushes the facing rail in the forward resulting direction well there are uh, you know some of the factors which uh, increase the amount of creep as per this percussion theory and those are the loose fish bolt worn out fish plates loose packing at the joint section wide ex uh, wide expansion gaps and heavy excel loads so this five factor increase the amount of creep as per the percussion theory while the fourth one that is about change in the temperature while the creep may also be due to the equal expansion contraction of the rail which owing to the changes in the temperature the creep is more rapid during the hot weather and the fifth cause that is the unbalanced traffic while in a single line system if heavy traffic runs in a two direction the creep is almost balanced otherwise if the traffic is only in one direction that will definitely lead to the heavy cause of the creep while in the double line system trains on a particular line being undirectional the creep occurs in both the direction or in the both the lines so these are the five cause wave action theory drag theory percussion theory change in the temperature and unbalanced traffic now let's see what are the different factors which governing the magnitude and the direction of the creep the first one that is the grade of track well creep is more over the steep gradient uh, particularly if the trains move down the slope with heavy loads then the type of rails while well, the old rails have more creep than a new rails the third that is the alignment of track while well, creep is greater on curves than on the straight alignment 
then direction of uh, heaviest traffic if the loaded trains run in one direction and uh, in the empty trains in the opposite direction the creep will develop in the direction of loaded trains okay so this may also occur that uh, the heaviest traffic is uh, moving in which direction okay so probably the creep may occur on the direction of heavy loaded traffic and the last that is the poor maintenance of track while well, the poor maintenance of track uh, and uh, poor design of super elevation or the curves and joints will also increase the creep okay so these are the part of the maintenance that uh, super elevation should be provided in a proper way the gradient of the curve should be proper so that the uh, easy movement of the train can be done okay and the joints should be properly fastened so these are the factors governing the magnitude and the direction of creep and those are the grade of track age of rails alignment of track and direction of heaviest traffic and the poor maintenance of track now let's see which are the effect of creep while well, development of disturbance in the gauge and alignment widening of gaps then disturbance at the point and crossings the interlocking mechanism of signals is disturbed uh, then a thrown out uh, of gear due to the creep uh, well it also becomes very difficult to refix the rail with the creep the ballast section also get disturbed due to the creep because uh, it is directly connected with the sleepers and the sleeper is subjected to the creep effect while smashing of uh, fish plates and fish bowls at the joints these are the effect of the creep i hope students you understand all this topic properly the creep of the rails and the defect of the rails thank you so much for your kind attention i will see you in the next lecture with a new talk thank you so much